I guess just for both you guys, I know it's, you know, first year back on, on this staff, but just in terms of incoming guys, freshmen, transfers, who are a couple guys that have, have just stuck out to each of you? Um, I, I would say, you know, on the on the freshman front, um, Cam Tilly's done a really nice job. Uh, Griffin Graves, uh, Trevor Booten's done a, a good job. He's done some good things. Uh, Carson Myers transfer, um, Connor McBride, uh, JUCO that that we got in. I think those guys, um, you know, first thought come to come to mind as guys who've really, you know, done a nice job throughout the fall and and in the spring here, and and should get some really solid innings. Fox, uh, what, what's it like to be back um, here and, and part of this staff? I know it's a, it's a group of guys you're familiar with and you had in Everett. I mean, it's a really, a really strong mix, but what's it like being back at, at Auburn again? I'm very grateful to be back. It's, uh, um, Auburn a, has a, always had a special place in my heart. Um, both my parents went here. I, I've had a couple stints here before. Um, I went to school here, played for Coach Baird. Um, they're just uh, – you know, it's been great being back. And then our current staff, the, the people that we have on the staff, the second to none in the coaching realm, but also as human beings. So it's just been fun coming to work every day with these guys. So I'm very grateful to be back at Auburn. Uh, yeah, Coach Teef, um, Butch talked a couple of weeks ago about Oscar, I mean, um, Joseph Gonzalez getting the feel in his slider back. Um, how have you seen that progress over the last uh, couple of weeks? Yeah, it's definitely uh, coming along. You know, we, we obviously held him back a little bit just to kind of ramp up through season. Um, and you could tell there was some rust, hadn't, hadn't pitched since obviously early last year. Um, but it's, it's gotten a lot better. Command of the fastball has gotten better. The sink to the fastball has gotten a lot a lot better. Um, and, and just really the refinement of his game, getting back to, to pitching and, and facing hitters. Um, he's done a really nice job every, every outing, doing a, a little – a little more than he did the last time, just to continue to improve uh, as we lead into opening weekend. And is this the weekend you kind of set your pitching up for opening weekend? And how is that looking right now as far as starters? Um, I don't. I wouldn't say that we've 100% uh, said anything. Um, the one I would say strength of our staff is our depth, um, and I think we've got a lot of different guys that are gonna they're gonna contribute in big ways. So we haven't necessarily said anything in, in stone, but I think we've got a lot of guys that can. They can handle a lot of roles, so I think we're very lucky in that in that sense. Uh, Coach Foxall, you talked about you know being back, um, the changes that have been made, I guess, to the facilities and what's being done now. Just how do you feel about the direction of Auburn baseball? Auburn baseball is in great hands, and and I think that um, with everything that's being done with the facilities, it's going to put us um, on more of an even playing field with with the rest of the league. So we're excited about that in the recruiting um, world and. Um, for our current student athletes, that, that they're going to have the best um, in the country and, and uh, on par with the rest of the league. Coach Steve, uh, working with the White Sox and player development and then now coming to, to college, how have you had to do things differently with the different kind of demands and expectations of amateur athletes versus professional athletes? Um, I wouldn't say uh, as far as d dealing with the athletes or just necessarily people in general. Obviously, I worked with a lot of our Latin kids that are even younger than, than these guys. Um, I would say the, the difference, probably the biggest thing, is the, the time uh, restraints with the NCAA. And that's not necessarily in a bad way or, or I guess, in a good way either. Um, but you don't have to – you don't think about, wow, we're up against the clock and, and this inner squad's got to end here in 10 minutes. Um, so that's been the the one thing in pro ball. It's kind of like, hey, we're going to be out here till the sun goes down until we get it right um, if we have to be. So um, I would say that's been the, the biggest uh, change. But really dealing with people, I mean, we had high school draft picks that we paid millions of dollars to. So, I mean, a lot of it is the same. And it's just treating people, um, you know, like like they are and, and just kind of being good to them. I guess following up on that, it, like to come from the professional ranks to college, why was this a fit for you? Is I mean, obviously it's a you know more more responsibility in terms of like the actual title of of, of the job, but the, why make this move to a college team? Um, I would say Butch, uh, you know, it all kind of starts with him um, and and just the culture he's built at, at this program. He's been incredibly successful um, since he's gotten here. I think that was obviously very alluring. Um, having three kids and traveling a lot on the pro side wasn't uh, super ideal. Um, but I would say it starts with Butch and just the quality of the program, the quality of the people around here, being from Georgia, 
you know, I, I knew about Auburn and had a lot of friends that went here and, and just the great things they said about, you know, being here. And so I think it's, it was just kind of a culmination of, of everything. But I would say Butch is, is obviously number one. Yeah, Coach Steve, what do you like about uh, Will Cannon potentially being a closer type, his stuff, his mentality, and who else do you like sort of at the end of the games? Um, you know, Will's uh, a bulldog. He always wants the ball. Um, you know, I think his in those moments uh, when we've seen him in shorter stints, the, everything ticks up. Um, his changeup has been really good. I think that's the one thing that, that might help, um, you know, against a multitude of lineups. Um, his slider's gotten better. So really just the, the mentality when you when you look at that, plus the uptick and stuff. I mean, it's nice to have him kind of back there. And then, uh, you know, the kind of going off of the depth of our staff, we kind of have uh, a little bit of a toolbox where we got, you know, a little of everything that can, you know, we could play, you know, matchups in different situations. Um, to try to keep everybody fresh throughout throughout the year, uh, that we've got a lot of guys we feel very confident in that get pitched at the back end of the game, depending on you know lineup construction and, and what's coming up. So we're very fortunate in that that situation. Uh, Coach Foxall, what does it mean to have a guy like Bobby Pierce as a leader, as an outfielder, defender, his big arm, and of course his bat in the lineup too? You know, in this league, I'm old, so I've been in this league a lot. Um, it, experience is is almost as important as talent. Um, and sometimes it's, it, it shows itself to be even more valuable. So to, to have a guy that's been through the battles and um, can, can talk to the younger guys and, and lead from his experience um, perspective is, is invaluable on this team. And, and he's done a great job up to this point of doing that, and, and we're going to lean on him heavily this year. Tief, we were actually we were talking to Bobby the other day, and he, he was talking about just sort of with the the depth of talent, and especially with the younger guys. Like in the past, there have been really talented young guys or talented freshmen. But the big thing that he kind of said was that a lot of the freshmen on this team don't feel like freshmen; they're mature, experienced. How much do you see that with with some of the freshmen that that you've got on staff? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe even Fox can answer that. Have been in the the college ranks a little more, but um, you know, a lot of them were were in summer school. Um, and I think that really helps springboard them, um, even if it's just like figuring their way around campus, uh, you know, little stuff that maybe seems small, like just being a, a step ahead of that, um, being here working out and kind of getting a feel for the university, I think really kind of springboarded them um, because they've been here since really I was hired, it feels like. Um, so I would say that's kind of just their familiarity and just being around, I think, helped them in the fall. Um, and, and they've done a good job of, of throwing strikes, which I think, you know, that might be where the freshmen, you know, struggle more than really uh, overall ability. Um, and they've really had shown a lot of confidence and, and uh, moxie on the mound. Uh, so I think those two things kind of lead you to think that they've got a little, they're a little more mature than, than where they're at. I don't know your take, but. Yeah, I agree. They've, they've been very businesslike and, and um, when, when they've shown up and, I think it starts with our older guys. It's just the culture, and, and it goes even back to what Teef said about the culture that Butch has built here, and, and uh, the guys that have been here are, are really good teachers to the guys that have come in. So um, when Bobby says that, I, I don't know if he understands that he, sh he should feel like he's responsible for that because I think the older guys have taught the, the younger guys how to mature faster and, and have shown them the, the, the way. Um, at, a, at a good pace. Um, so, yeah, they do feel older, and um, they have been more responsible than probably your typical freshman. Josh? Everett, speaking of experience, how, how nice has it been to have uh, Coach Foxhall there with, with the, the seasoning that he's had? He's been through a bunch of SEC seasons to lean on, maybe be a sounding board throughout the season. Uh, I don't think we have enough time to really uh, be able to, to truly articulate how fortunate and lucky and blessed I've been to have him um just to lean on him and you know the days where I'm racking my brain like what do you see and what you know what could I be doing better what you know from the college side what what things did you do um to have that resource literally staring me right in the face across across from my desk has been just a godsend you know when when we were talking about hiring him you know, I, I told Butch, I was like, yes, like he fills in my gaps, um, not having been in the, the college ranks. And, and it's, I've just been so dang lucky to, to have him to, as, a, as a sounding board 
um, when things are good, when things are bad, when things are in the middle. Um, so I can't thank him enough uh, for, for the help and guidance that he's given me. And Scott, I wanted to ask you about what, what you've seen in, in someone who's new in this role at, at the college level uh, and, and uh, emerging, I guess, in his career as opposed to someone who's more seasoned like yourself. What do you, what do you see in him? Well, I, I think I've benefited from, from uh, Teef just as much as he's benefited from me. Um, he is uh, the new age pitching coach. I mean, that's why Butch brought him here, and, and uh, that's why he's done such a good job with our guys. Um, we've had technology around for a while that um, old school coaches, and I'll put myself in that category, maybe didn't understand it quite as much or un understood it but didn't know how to teach from it. And um, coming from professional baseball, um, where he used it on a daily basis with so many people in, a, in an organization. Um, Teef is an expert at using the technology, and he's great at teaching with the technology. So I've benefited from learning from him, I'm sure, more than he's um, benefited from learning from me and, and our guys the, the same way. And um, hopefully I, I can just be here to, to, and help him learn from all my mistakes that I've made. That's, that's how I feel like what I do in the office every day is, is hopefully he's learned from the mistakes that I've made, and, and uh, I think we're a good team together. Yes, Scott, you were, I guess, obviously I think like your ties are more strong here, but you, know, I mean, you coming from Starkville in the last job, there's so many Mississippi State ties here. You won a national championship there. John Cohen's here. Rhett Hobart's here. Bush was there at one point. Is, have you seen any ties from that program that's you know one of the winningest in the history of the sport kind of move toward Auburn and, and maybe have any influence on Auburn with all those voices that are now in the room from Starkville? Yeah, again, it, it's culture. And um, like we talked about with the facilities, Auburn's in, in good hands. Um, with the facilities, it's in good hands because John Cohen's here and, and um, he's got vision and uh, he's a great leader, and um, he brought a lot of the best people from Mississippi State to Auburn um, so to help continue to build this culture. So, yeah, I, I see it every day, and, and as we all know, Butch came from that culture, and, um, and he's certainly the, his first eight years has, has brought that over here, and, and uh, I, I see a lot of the similarities of, of why um, Mississippi State had a strong baseball program um, prevalent in, in the Auburn culture now. Steve, and I know we don't have three hours that would probably take to answer this question, but can you give us a 10,000 foot view of kind of that analytic side of things? I know y'all are bringing some new things to Auburn and, and kind of how you use that, not necessarily as the only tool, but as part of a toolbox for, for pitching. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest thing is just knowing guys uh, a little bit more in depth and trying to really get them to have confidence in their strengths. Um, you know, I, I, it's probably looked at as, as maybe way more in depth than it truly is. Um, but just trying to, trying to know what a guy does well definitively, not just, you know, I think this, I think that. It's like, hey, this is you against, you know, the rest of the SEC or, you know, Division One in general. Um, and then, you know, some of the biomechanical stuff is we're just trying to keep guys at their best. Um, it's not necessarily like super rocket science. Um, it can be hard to coach, but at least we're, you know, taking all of the information in and, and trying to get the best out of players and get them to understand why they are here and why they can be the best and try to build, you know, the confidence within themselves to go out and perform and not have any, you know, reservations in the back of their mind when, when they're in big situations. So um, I, I really think it's just utilizing all the information to, to try to make them understand why they are who they are and what their strengths are. Yeah, we talked to Chase also, but he said the biggest difference for him is learning how to use the numbers. Is that the thing you're talking about, trying to teach them, hey, here's, here's what it is and this is why it's important? Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, um, Chase is a, a prime example um, of a guy who's got really good stuff, and I think he's grown, I would like to think, since at least we've presented him, you know, different ideas and in different ways. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's really just trying to get them to be their best and show them, you know, ways that they can perform and why, why the ideas are, are strong and, and it's backed in information, not as much of, of you know, one-off anecdotal uh, ideas, I guess.